And welcome to another episode of History with Julia Herdman. Today's subject is Jeanne Barrett. Jeanne Barrett is best known for being the first woman to circumnavigate the globe as part of the Bougainville expedition, sailing first on the Budas and then the Star from 1766 to 1769, to become valet and assistant to the expedition's naturalist, Philibert Commerson. She disguised herself as a man and took the name, Jean Barrett. Humble Beginnings Jeanne Barrett was born on July 27, 1740, in the village of La Camelle in the Burgundy region of France. Her baptism record survives and identifies her as the legitimate issue of Jean Barrett and Jeanne Pochard. Her father was a day laborer and seemed likely to have been illiterate, as he did not sign the parish register. Between 1760 and 1764, Barrett became a housekeeper to the naturalist Philibert Commerson. Commerson settled in toulon sur aru some 20 kilometers to the south of La Camelle, upon his marriage in 1760. Commerson's wife, who was the sister of the parish priest, died shortly after giving birth to a son in April 1762, and it seems that Barrett took over management of Commerson's household around that time. Jeanne Barrett gradually established herself as an orderly and organized right arm for Philibert Commerson's research, and her curiosity gave her a sense of initiative and action that would serve her throughout her life. Barrett and Commerson shared a more than an interest in his household as she became pregnant in 1764. French law at that time required women who became pregnant out of wedlock to obtain a certificate of pregnancy in which they could name the father of their unborn child. Barrett's certificate, from August 1764, survives. It was filed in a town 30 kilometers away and witnessed by two men of substance who likewise had traveled a considerable distance from their homes. She refused to name the father of her child, but historians do not doubt that it was Commerson's and that she was protecting him. Paris and Children Shortly afterwards, Barrett and Commerson moved to Paris, where she continued in the role of his housekeeper. His legitimate son remained in the care of his brother-in-law in toulon sur aru Barrett changed her name to Jeanne de Bonfoy, and her child was born in December 1764. Little Jean-Pierre Barrett was given up to the Paris Foundlings Hospital and he was quickly placed with a foster mother. Little Jean-Pierre suffered the fate of so many at that time and died in the summer of 1765. However, in her marriage contract in 1774 in Port Louis, Jeanne declared she had a son Aimé Prosper Eugène Bonvois, born at the Hôtel Dieu in Paris on May 15, 1766. So, Commerson and Barrett probably had another child before they left on the scientific expedition that would make them both famous. The Expedition in 1765 Commerson was invited to join the expedition led by Count Louis Antoine de Bougainville to circumnavigate the globe. Commerson was hesitant about accepting the commission because of his poor health. The appointment, however, allowed him a servant, and so between them, a plan was hatched so that Barrett could accompany him as his nurse and assistant. The problem was that women were not allowed in the French Navy, so Barrett put on a pair of trousers, bound her breasts and made herself look like a man. Although both Barrett and Commerson would later deny their relationship, we know that before leaving Paris, Commerson noted in his will that he left Jeanne Barrett, known as Bonifoy, my governess, a lump sum of £600 with arrears of salary and the furnishing of her Paris apartment. Breaking the Rules The pair boarded the ship in December 1766. Because of the vast amount of equipment Commerson brought with him, Captain Francois Chesnard de Lager or Dais, gave up his own large cabin to Commerson and his assistant. This fortuitous act gave Barrett significantly more privacy than she might otherwise have expected on board. And meant she did not have to use the shared heads like other crew members to relieve herself. Surviving accounts of the expedition vary on when Barrett's actual gender was first discovered. According to Bougainville, rumors that Barrett was a woman had circulated for some time but her identity was not finally confirmed until the expedition reached Tahiti in April 1768. As soon as she and Commerson landed on shore, 
Barrett was immediately surrounded by a group of Tahitians who spotted her femaleness and cried out that she was a woman. Her discovery caused such turmoil it was necessary to return her to the ship to protect her. Bougainville recorded this incident in his journal some weeks after it happened when he had an opportunity to visit the Etoile to interview Barrett personally. In another account, there was much speculation about Barrett's gender early in the voyage and asserts that Barrett claimed to be a eunuch when confronted directly by Captain Largo or Days. However, this cannot be verified as his official log has not survived. After leaving Tahiti, the pair crossed the Pacific and the Indian Ocean with the rest of the expedition. On the island of Mauritius, known then as Isle de France and an important French trading station, Commerson was delighted to find that an old friend and fellow botanist Pierre Poivre was serving as governor. This provided the navy with a convenient place to dispose of Barrett and Commerce in services, and the expedition travelled on to France without them. The intendant offered his friend excellent working conditions, a huge botanical garden, the Jardin de Pamplemousses, the first botanical garden of tropical plants created in the world, and a 30% increase in his salary plus official accommodation. Commerson resumed his work collecting plants and identifying palm trees. He immediately fell in love with a cocoa de mer brought back from Seychelles by the engineer Barry, and named it Cocoa Buttocks because of its striking resemblance to this part of the human anatomy. Commerson then left to explore the large island of Madagascar, located 1,100 km to the west with Pierre Sornerot, the governor's nephew, Pierre Poivre, who was also an excellent naturalist and draftsman, but Jean Barrett did not accompany him on this trip. Assistant and Housekeeper on Mauritius, Barrett continued in her role as Commerson's assistant and housekeeper. She likely accompanied him to botanize on Madagascar and Bourbon Island in 1770-1772. Commerson continued to have serious health problems, and he died in Mauritius in February 1773. After Commerson's death, Barrett seems to have found work running a tavern in Port Louis for a time. Then, on May 17, 1774, she married Jean Dubonnet a non-commissioned officer in the French army who was most likely on the island on his way home to France. Marriage and return to France There is no record of exactly when Barrett and her husband arrived in France, thus completing her voyage of circumnavigating the globe. Most likely, it was sometime in 1775. In April 1776, she received the money due to her under commerce and will and settled with Dubonnet in his native village of saint Orlais, where he was the blacksmith. State recognition of services to botany. Her contribution to scientific knowledge came in 1785 when Barrett was granted a pension of 200 livres a year by the Ministry of Marine. The document granting her this pension makes clear the high regard with which she was held. It reads Jeanne Barrett, by means of a disguise, circumnavigated the lobe on one of the vessels commanded by Mr. de Bougainville. She devoted herself in particular to assisting Mr. de Commerce in doctor and botanist, and shared with great courage the labours and dangers of this servant. Her behaviour was exemplary, and Mr. de Bougainville refers to it with all due credit. His lordship has been gracious enough to grant to this extraordinary woman a pension of 200 livres a year to be drawn from the fund for invalid servicemen, and this pension shall be payable from January 1, 1785. Jeanne Barrett died in saint Orlais on August 5, 1807, at age 67. Honours and Publications Commerce in named many of the plants he collected after friends and acquaintances. One of them, a tall shrub with dark green leaves and white flowers that he found on Madagascar, he named Barrett Shabonafidia. But Commerson's name for this genus did not survive, as it had already been named by the time his reports reached Paris, it is currently known as Taria. While over 70 species are named in honour of Commerce in, only one, Selenum Barrett GE, honours Barrett. For many years, Bougainville's published journal, a popular bestseller in its day, in English translation and in the original French, was the only widely available source of information about Barrett. More recent scholarship has uncovered additional facts and documentation about her life, but much of the new information remained little known and inaccessible to the general public, particularly outside France. The first English-language biography of Barrett, by John Dunmore, was not published until 2002 only in New Zealand. Other articles appeared only in scholarly journals. The 2010 biography of Barrett by Glynis Ridley, The Discovery of Jeanne Barrett, brought Barrett to the attention of a wider audience and helped to overturn some of the old misconceptions about her life. 
Barrett's association with the botanist Philibert Commerson began in the early 1760s and undeniably helped raise her out of poverty. When attempting to explain Barrett's literacy, or her facility for arranging and caring for commerce in scientific collections, previous writers have always maintained that Barrett was commerce in creation. But their assumption that commerce in included his serving girl and housemaid into his prosperous world because he was enchanted by some combination of her attractiveness and good nature is romantic. The prospect of a lasting association with the daughter of an illiterate day laborer would never have had lasting appeal if he had not noticed something extraordinary in her. Commerson was an intolerant man, who had no hesitation in publicly correcting his university professor's errors in the middle of their lectures, and so he was unlikely to have involved Barrett in his work had she not shown a brilliant aptitude for it. So what is the intersection between the world of the mid-18th century Loire peasant and the gentleman scientist, asks Ridley. Barrett and Commerson, she concludes, came together at the meeting point between two views of the natural world. A folkloric, feminine tradition concerning the medicinal properties of plants and the emerging field of scientific classification. Barrett captured the attention of Commerson because she possessed botanical knowledge that lay well beyond the competence of his university professors and mentors. She was a home-taught botanist schooled in the oral tradition of the curative properties of plants. Barrett was not Commerson's pupil, instead, she was his teacher. If you have enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe, so that you never miss an episode of Julia Herdman History.